And this dramatic difference will become clear in the how you influence business models. So the business model existed, in fact, it was created say, in the 1940s, 1950s. It was influenced by the warehouses of contracts, not by the one terabyte by the receiver. It was also influenced by telegraph lines, not by, by rock lines. So, this is another example, and we were talking um, really about the standard operation design in the community, and again, you see a, and this is very interesting to look here. If you look at this, is the 1890s to the 19th century, uh, sorry, yeah, 19th uh, century to the 20th century, starting about the Second World War, we see a big drop. This is primarily much better than the machine technology here. We start with a very sensitive of computers, starting from uh, vacuum tubes and mechanical, all the way to the and this is going to be rough. The rough cost is about 10 to the 13. To put it into perspective, if you are going to test it across the state, the centralized network, such as Visa, will say this one on Earth, to a 10 to the 5. So it's very easy to see, if, for example, modern adoptions, and I'm going to put it there, today scale way better than credit cards in this area. And that's a critical point to understand about this. That today's options are way ahead of the credit card industry, once you factor in the, the technology. Now, this is the answer to now, Nielsen's law, what it says is basically 1.5 a year. So it doubles by 1.5 times every year. Um, it followed this pattern pretty closely. This, this uh, screen, this latest one is God, so, uh, 2019. And if you extrapolate it out, we get about 1.2, 1.3 gigabits per second today. I can actually get 1.5 gigabits per second in Canada or in Dr. Elbow and go down the same shop. You know what's interesting? That the lowest download bandwidth that I can buy today from shop is the highest one up here. So this point here is the lowest I can actually get. The lowest are some of I don't get anything less than that. The cable company in Vancouver only sell this. But if you don't sell any of this stuff, just that. So if you look at it in terms of say the box size of uh, one metal for metal, then we would have very interesting numbers. So we say that if you took one megabyte in 2008, one metal was conceived, and you extrapolate that to the day, the equivalent in bandwidth is about 195 megabytes. And we need to think for a minute what this means. That's the equivalent demand. And so I'm coming from technological scale. Now, a lot of people in the Bitcoin community will say, well, Bitcoin doesn't scale because of technology. That is simply not true. You can scale a Bitcoin like network today very easily, provided the protocol will support your scaling algorithm. And what's good, because this is a change, that the date started in 2010. I started being involved with Bitcoin in 2011. And the, the conversation's been going on already for over a decade. And while that is happening, this is going on. So basically, this is what's happening. So just proof of thought. Yeah. The other interesting thing, if you extrapolate this, this into the future, when we talk about 1.5 gigabytes blocks, equivalency in about 2026. And we're looking at rates of about uh, 10 megabits per second, which is about the maximum the cable industry. So, what are we thinking it? In the first era, we looked at credit. The first one was the dinosaur in 1949 was conceived, it was introduced in 1950. Now we're back to Warehouse for lunch runs, family machines, telegraph lines. And they needed a 7% merchant just to pay the time of the transactions. So you can imagine somebody 
to pay the cost of processing this data. And so they came up with this business model, which was to say the merchants will pay for it in exchange for and that might seem the same. This is critical because this is the business model of the credit card industry today. It has no change. They're still stuck in the table of machines, the punch cards, and the telegraph cards. The cost for the transaction can be higher than some of the today. If I need to train, where do you use my Canadian credit card? A gas station in the city. My cost will be higher than some percent between the cost of the, 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 the gas station passes to me and what the bank charges me in the conversion rate between the US law and the Canadian law. If I'm going to take a taxi cab and pay with a credit card, the cost will be higher, maybe at 34% of cases. So my solution to Las Vegas is never pay with a credit card or a taxi cab. Pay with cash. You guys say you want to buy gas in the States? Pay with cash. Seriously, you can save money just by doing this. So this is the concept. And the concept is in the app. What I mean just the element of the credit card industry is it does not have an incredible value of skill. So we saw, for example, they can easily run the 50, 60,000 processors there. The other thing they keep to understand about credit cards, which is very important for cryptocurrencies, is that with a credit card, they have to accommodate a peak activity during the summer. So people want to buy stuff for Christmas. So you have a 20, 50, 20 times increase in transaction rate. So a company like Visa needs to have an infrastructure in place to support something that they 50 to 20 times their transaction level. Any cryptocurrency that wishes to compete with them for this market is going to have to do the same thing. It's going to have to say, my box size, my transaction throughput has to wrap up in early December by a factor of 20 times, easy, no more. And I don't even really consider that we were to superimpose on a worldwide basis a different thing, which is Islam, and have our black holidays at the same time as Christmas. Then it's just my advice all day. That's the worst case scenario. You may even have more than 20 times. So if you want to take out the piece of risk to call the banks, etc., you better be able to deal with the problems that are already dealt with. Visa solution? You just open up their, their, their infrastructure. And they have a capability. You don't want to use a visa card. From the 20th of December, and all that sees it up. And this is critical. So when we look at it at an auction that's going to be it, we need to meet those standards. So now we're going to take a look at these enterprises, uh, program and social business models. Now I'm going to speak here primarily about Bitcoin and Monero. And I'm going to make it I would like to cover other colleagues, particularly colleagues that people around are interested in, and I will do that primarily in the discussion. Do you have a question about Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Dogecoin, Fire, Hash, Bitcoin SV? Then you know, we can deal with that in the discussion. Most of them follow the Bitcoin protocol, a few have followed the Monero design. But they have another problem. So why do we have a Bitcoin? Well, the first mover. Just like Dynas Club was the first mover. Now, one interesting thing that has happened is that most of the other clients have followed Bitcoin and a lot of the protocols, just like American Express and Visa. In 1959, followed by this one. They did the same business model. So there's a lot of overlap from the lot of those that followed Bitcoin. So you have a proof of work of security. And this is the big one. You have a 21 million BTC limit. And the block reward falls by half every four years. It's the only way you can enforce this. And then you get this really interesting question. You need to replace the block reward with transaction fees. Now, in this social paper, in the original Bitcoin paper, there's no explanation how this is supposed to happen. All that it says is this is going to happen. 
There's no mathematical proof. There's no gate theory. There's no justification. There's no references. Now, so the initial design of the program was to build a new one on the bar side. It's about 2000 when launched. And then 2009 to about uh, 18 months in 2010, August 2010. So, first of all, I'm using Then we put it in one megabyte block size as an anticipated measure. Interestingly enough, Satoshi then disappeared from the solar community around six months later. That's a kind of like that has it. The one increase they did in Bitcoin, of course, was they took around it. And they essentially doubled it with Zen. And the mathematical that is, if you only count the portion of the transaction that was your one megabyte limit, then effectively you double the capacity. It's a technical workaround to avoid to provide access to that ability, which was done. Um, uh, so it took essentially they could have doubled this block size. They could have gone hundred to uh, hundred to two hundred times, but that's all they did. This limits the a scaling on the main chain. Now, one of the things that also does is it limits all the second tier solutions. Because they end up being set up sooner or later on the main chain. So, I'm also working there. Because a lot of times, I can end up this kind of mind that is just as well as actually. So, that's a big question. So, you have a strict limitation, very high fees from lots of people. Now, here's some historic interesting anecdote. Bitcoin was created in 2008. We had a major financial crisis in 2008, and it was caused by money printing and by the behavior of the central banks. So you get this whole reaction. Well, any kind of inflation is evil. We got a rid of the Instead of maybe saying, well, maybe we can be a bit more nuanced about this. But then it, that's influenced that it's a product of this as well. That is influenced by an event that occurred right now as much. If I may move on, I'll be a bit more as much to deal with the problems of the census. Okay. So now we're going to next one, we're going to look at the script. Uh, and we're going to look at the script. Now we're going to look at the script. And by the way, was a major free mind, it's an entire credit of the Bitcoin token just on. Whether Python is a media mind disguised, uh, we might disguise it as a media mind or an actual media mind. And that's interesting, was that 80%? Or sorry, 80 to 80%. The creative continuous emission from back to the street emission, the same model, 184 uh, of the. Yeah, 184 billion uh, BCM. And again, it had the same problem as Bitcoin. And it introduced a lot of the privacy things that we know about on air, but not a lot of the stuff that we know about later. But let's focus on some privacy at that point in time. But then, another point on air, when air was stolen from the um, Bitcoin, God of course, really, the demon is an honest mind. But in the first weeks, the Terra mission in Monero was introduced. Mm. So we have this tail mission. And it was set to a correspond to about 1% maximum per year. Now, what's interesting about this is that just below the inflation rate of gold. So you may be just hard enough to keep gold, but you don't go nuts. Gold is the gold standard of hard money. The last thing you can ask, okay, so you see the gold standard, it's a gold top. And that's what we're here. And this is what's 126 minimum tail emission. Okay, so you have a, a regular uh, decay And then, you go into the television. What also when I did is they, they move a decimal point by 10,000. Which, fuck, I mean, that's a significant in that respect in the sense it looks like it. So, here's your crypto uh, um, penalty. And essentially, what it is, is you take the media or the last one across. And pull that 
And then you increase, if you increase this medium, let's say, a uh, small percentage, let's say 1%, then you lose 0.01% of the broker law as a penalty. So the miner, to mine the large market, to do twice the medium, so the medium can grow. But they pay a penalty. And the idea is that the transaction fees have to compensate the penalty. So this is, this is the base reward times this uh, percentage increase in the block size. Square. There were a couple of other things added. The mods are designed to stabilize the long-term medium. There's a reason for the 50 uh, um, times cap in the long-term medium, of course, is to allow for the visa thing I was mentioning about. That you want to allow this flash ramp up in December to deal with retail transaction. This is where Monero has addressed this problem. And the current proposal right now is to actually make the uh, penalty free zone, which is because actually what happens is if your penalty is too low, if, you, if your plot uh, size is too small, the penalty effectively becomes infinite. Very, very expensive. So you have to have a minimum plot um, size where you have no penalty. And this is what we're going to talk about. This is going to be made dynamic. Of course, a very strong community focused on privacy and flexibility. Yeah. Everybody knows Monero has privacy and flexibility. I like to share something personal about this. I thought if Monero became a member of the Monero community was scale. I learned to value privacy and blockchain as a member of the Monero community, not before. So this is very important. It can be wrong. But if you can't even transact, there's little point worrying about whether you're transacting private or private. Now, an interesting historical event here is that ASIC mining and Bitcoin started in 2014, just before launch of Monero. And as far as it's to influence a lot of the earlier working members into this idea, well, we're going to get, we are miners, so we want to get paid. And they didn't buy the assumptions made in Bitcoin that you can actually transact with transaction. So, a lot of let's be safe, let's put this in. But that's kind of the, the interesting uh, involvement. I don't know about later, and my passion is scary. And so that's what I do on it. A lot of what I do on it. So that's why I got involved. Okay. So how do you actually the fee model? How do rational miners and users? Well, how does it work in Bitcoin? Well, in Bitcoin, what you have is you essentially have two options. And remember, Bitcoin also describing Bitcoin like points. So either you run out of transactions, in which case you have space left in the block, and the fees are very, very low. And this is exactly what happened in Bitcoin to about the 2013, 2014. Or you run out of space in the block, and then fees, the transactions compete against each other against this brick wall, and fees count. So you have a space left or no space left. There's no in between. Monero, you do the same thing. You run out of transactions. That's kind of where we are today, because we're still under the 300,000 limit by Bitcoin. So we're actually in this condition. Once you trigger the penalty, you go into the penalty condition. And what happens is you order all the transactions in order of fee right. You're left with the lowest transaction. We're tested against the additional penalty. If you make a profit, you put it. If you don't make a profit, you don't. So the lowest uh, paying transaction in the block that gets in is actually at the penalty. In order to scale the block, you need at least to get into the penalty. So you can at least leave that one transaction in there. Now, from that, is the interface. Monero does have a limit. It's dynamic. It's never happened. But you can push the whole penalty down on the walking side, in which case you get back into a Bitcoin scale. The difference is, years before you get up, your penalty is very, very high. So that's very rare that this is going to happen. But it is very impossible. So how these, the next thing we look at is minimum non realities Now we've got about minimum fees in Bitcoin, we've got about minimum fees in 
among the airway dots going all those different ones. These things are not fake in most of my minus phenomenons. It's the descendants. What it is is that the nodes will not relay the transaction unless they feel the transaction is minor. It was actually introduced in Monet in 2014 in response to uh, uh, the only time when it's a comment. And the idea is, well, if you find minor transaction, we're not going to relate. It then was copied by a whole bunch of other coins, like Litecoin, Dogecoin, right across the map, in eventually the internet. So this is a Monero development. And in a space left condition where you have space, you have already been set by the developer. Basically, sovereignty. Theoretically, and, and, and the space in the box, the thing should be zero. And in fact, that's what happened in Bitcoin. And the zone is free, because most transactions in Bitcoin are free. If you have a no space, if you have a free market and you're competing against box, then you can set these minimum fees by some sort of observing the blockchain. So you can do it that way. In Monero, it's a bit more complicated. Because in Monero, what you have is you have this dynamic field. And the reason you have this comes back to the panel. If you're going to have a transaction match penalty, then the smallest transaction, sorry, the smallest penalty is going to be a full size transaction that gives you the ratio of the process. What effectively happens is, you spread it, so you take the ratio of this transaction to standard, because that doesn't change. And then you look at the top eight you need. The bigger the block size, the smaller penalty you're going to pay a matter. Because the transaction, the ratio of the quadratic penalty is very, very small. So what happens is that the minimum fee that you can do scaling with in one area will fall as the square of inverse square, sorry, as an inverse square of the block size. So what happens, and this is a critical thing to understand. If you want a fixed rate of, of and scale in the money order, then you have to pay a fee that is going to fall with the inverse of the block size itself. Because what's happening is, if I always want to pay 1%, then my fee is always going to be the same in whatever. But I have a more more transactions here. But my fee for that ratio is going to always be the same ratio. If, on the other hand, the speed is the minimum you can do, then it falls as a square. So, I think it falls somewhere between the linear, with the inverse linear of the uh, block size over the square of the process. So, what does my error tell us? This is really interesting. So, if I have a block size of, say, 300,000 bytes, and I increase it to 3 million bytes, therefore, my minimum fee per byte dropped by a factor of 100. This is big right into the program. It's big right into the network. For a constant rate of scaling, F A is proportional to the inverse of the block type, not the square. So basically, if you, if you double, uh, if you take them for, your fee goes down by a factor of 10. Now, the fee reward is a really interesting effect. What tells you is, are you really replacing transaction, the, the block reward with transaction fees? And what it, this tells you is that the fee reward in the middle is going to fall as you increase the block size somewhere between the unit of the block size and the square of the block size. So fees are going to keep falling. Now, I know people are going to say, wait a minute, we're going to get spammed to death. You know, then you're going to send an aside here. Then is it governed by the cost in, say, constant USD? So if you take away, you factor that in, the spam cost in Monero will either stay the same or rise as you increase the block size. Because you've got to allow, as a minimum, the equation of exchange. That if, for example, I double the, the, the block size, the value in real terms of Monero is going to double. Okay, here's the fee reward for a bunch of currencies. Cryptocurrencies are very interesting. And, and I got a bunch of them. So, Bitcoin, you have 
a fixed block size of 10 base megabytes. So we're going to run now by 1.41%. It's been significantly higher, but that's roughly what it is. Ethereum, now in Ethereum, if you, if you think of gas as block size, it's a simple, I know it's very simplistic, but essentially the gas limit is equivalent to the block size limit. So that caps how much gas you can burn and effectively caps the number of transactions. You can do about 24%. And what they did there is the, it's a, a done by the miners. Now, it should point out that these two groups can or cannot choose to increase the block size. Just because it's miners rather than developers doesn't mean that this block size has increased. And in fact, in, in Ethereum, the miners are basically not increasing the block size. There's one thing that's actually increased the block size, quite uncontroversial, it's stash, and they doubled it, from what I understand, and they didn't even hit the limit. So we're going to do it too. But our approach will require some centralized entity to do this. And if I think it's enough to think that you can decentralize it by having the minus to it. Now, these are the ones that have no space. These ones have space. And you see here what's happening. Dogecoin 0.37, Ethereum Classic 0.002, Litecoin 0.19, PCH is really interesting, it can cash. They're 0 0.29. So they're hope of going there. And that's a 0 0.0032. That's because of touch eviction close, it got it up to 3%. We're really proud of this. And we do this with massive blocks full of bonkers transactions in many cases, because I think what they're trying to do is uh, non fungible focus on the main blockchain. And they kind of got it up there. And then you have Monero at 0.51. Now Monero is still in the space section. Uh, and it's, uh, so uh, you've got the, the dynamic penalty. Okay. So here's the question. If the point to increase the block size is less than Monero, I would expect the fees to be low. Let me think about this for a moment. If you put, put less friction than Monero has on increasing the block size, you expect fees to be less rather than more. So Monero effectively puts a cap on this. If you want to do this, you're going to have to have a much stiffer penalty than Monero. I've just indicated the position of Bitcoin Core here. Because basically, in order to have any security, you need a hope for this to work. You're better locked on that box size. Because as that whole world goes down, that's what you have. And a lot of people will love to say, well, you can't really scale on chain because other upgrade guys are not fast enough, or micro SD cards are big enough, or all these kind of things. But the reality is, it's not. It's a political problem. But you don't want to admit it. And this is the question that I think is a really difficult question in the Bitcoin community. Because not just Bitcoin is impacted, but only one number of coins. If I go back to my previous slide, the only one other than one error has done that is Dogecoin. And Dogecoin did because there was a bug in the code and we didn't fix it. So, the only thing I'm doing, what are the emissions? Everybody's ready to use the thing. And now we have these problems. So, I would suggest, in some ways, that maybe one of the reasons we're having trouble with adoption. In the blockchain, it's not governments or banks, it's external things, it's external locus of control, it's internal locus of control. How do you design these blockchains? Because we design it so that blockchains of people can't use it, you're not going to have adoption. Period. And in this respect, the, the, the one that's really done is Monero, and the second form of those two dodge, and the rest of them, the point is going to be either you have very high fees, or you're not going to have security. Now, so at this point in time, I'd like to move to a question and answer model, and I will be able to um, answer questions and also bring some more shots and stuff from online. Uh, so we'll move to that uh, uh, portion. Let us have some questions. I prefer you start with applying this other than Bitcoin on there. So, any questions? Anybody wants to take this issue? Anyone brave enough to take this issue? 
If I were to look at Bitcoin and Monero, anyone want some questions? Okay, I'm going to show a few things here. Um, okay. This is um, uh, historical Monero transactions per day. Uh, the site is Pit Info Shop. It's a great site if you want to look at block coins and look at their history. In fact, the way to do this very easily is to take a look at the log. Now, this is Monero. Let me give you another. I'm going to add Dodge on this, on this uh, graph. I'm going to show you something really interesting. Okay, the blue is Dogecoin, and red is Monero. Now, both points in history, Dogecoin is never a national transaction for data Monero, except just recently. Can you wonder what happened? No. Let's change this to... Um, Now, by the way, this is where Monero went from uh, MSAC to CSAC. That's what that, that's what that did. That's the work of the MRF, people that started over there. So he's responsible for this. Seriously, your work led to this, to the Monero project. You were involved in this. Cause of these crashes. Or oh, I did it's implemented. So just to point this out. We work on whatever interest lab in 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 percentage by making the, the privacy of the Monero law position. But what we have here, what happened in Dogecoin? What happened in Dogecoin is the price went up by a factor of 200, and they didn't change the minimum number of real entry. So the fees skyrocketed, and people stopped using it. There's a good example of what happens with fees if you allow them to get too high. You better drive your monitor away. If I want to do a transaction and my fee goes for a fraction of a cent, I lost. I might decide I want to use it in payment. Method. Just like I do in Las Vegas. If they charge me a $3 fee, you know, to just use your credit card to pay a taxi. But that's the guy, you just don't get cash and save the $3. But I tell them, well, that's pretty reasonable. So, anyway, I just need to do this. Um, I think this chart is a bit interesting when you do that. And I can't any more questions. So, I will be here then for the rest of the time for questions. And Thank you.